Welcome to today's class. In this class, we'll be talking about what rectification is, and then the three types of rectification will be mentioned. And finally, we'll talk more about one type of rectification, which is the half wave rectifier. In subsequent classes, we'll discuss details of the other types of rectifier. So let us begin with today's class. What is rectification? Rectification of AC signal is a process of converting an AC signal with zero average DC value to a signal with a non-zero DC value. So simply put, rectification is a process of converting AC signal to DC signal. This is an important aspect of a power supply unit for equipment and devices that need DC power. There are three types of rectifier. Three types. The first one is half wave rectifier. The second is full wave center top rectifier. Then the third one is full wave bridge rectifier. So like we mentioned earlier on, we'll discuss more about the half wave rectifier in today's class and in subsequent classes or talk about the full wave center tapped rectifier and the full wave bridge rectifier. So let's discuss more about the single phase half wave rectifier. Shown is the circuit of a half wave rectifier and the input and output waveform. What is a half wave rectifier? A half wave rectifier uses alternate half cycle of the input sinusoid. As shown in this circuit, you see that the diode VD is forward biased. So during the positive half cycle, this diode will conduct a line current to flow through the loads ROL as can be seen in the input and output waveform. But during the negative half cycle, this diode VD becomes reversed bias and no current will be allowed to flow through to load resistor RL. And that is also shown in the negative half cycle. We see that there is no output voltage. So alternate half cycle conducts. This cycle conducts. The positive half cycle conducts. The negative half cycle, it doesn't conduct. So what we have here in the waveform, this is the input signal given as Vs is equal to Vm sine omega t, while this is V out, the output waveform. So now let's consider an input voltage, the sinusoidal input voltage given as Vs is equal to Vm sine omega t, where Vm is peak input voltage and omega is equal to 2 pi f. f is the frequency of the input voltage. The input voltage has no DC component, so Vs will be equal to zero. But before we proceed further, we want to look at some important designations. If we are representing voltages, how do we know the AC signal, the DC signal, or the composite signal? If we use a lowercase letter, for V and subscript uppercase letter S, then we are referring to the composite supply voltage. That is voltage containing both AC and DC components. Then if we use uppercase letter V, subscript uppercase letter S, then we are referring to the DC components of the voltage. If we use lowercase letter V and lowercase letter S, then we are referring to the AC components of the voltage. So let's take note of these important designation. The composite voltage Vs is equal to the DC component plus the AC component. So we'll be using these designations throughout this course. So let us continue. Now for the rectifier, we just talked about the half wave rectifier. The rectifier has two intervals or cycle. The first cycle is the positive half cycle. Now, during the positive half cycle, the AC signal Vs is positive from zero less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to pi. So the half wave rectifier at this time acts as a short circuit because the rectifier is forward 
bias. During the positive half cycle, the input voltage appears across the load resistor ROL since the diode D1 is forward bias. That gives us an, an output voltage of V out is equal to Vm sine omega t for 0 less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to pi. Since there will be a DC drop across the diode, for example, Vd being equal to 0 0.7 volt for a silicon diode, the peak output voltage Vm will be Vm minus Vd. And thus, the instantaneous output voltage will be V out is equal to Vm minus Vd sine omega t for 0 less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to pi. So that is what happens during the positive half cycle. What about during the negative half cycle? And let's talk about the negative half cycle. During the negative half cycle, Vs is negative from pi less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to 2 pi. In this instance, the rectifier acts as an open circuit because the rectifier is reversed bias. And because the rectifier is reversed bias, diode D1 does not allow any current to flow through. So the output voltage V out will be equal to 0 for pi less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to 2 pi. So that is what happened during the positive and the negative half circle. So that's why we said the half wave rectifier conducts during alternate half cycle. So during the positive half cycle it conducts, during the negative half cycle it does not conduct. And let's talk about two important parameters that must be specified in selecting a diode for rectifier design. The first one is the current handling capability of the diode. That is the largest current that the diode is expected to conduct. Because if you use a diode that cannot withstand the current that's going to pass through, then that diode cannot function properly as a rectifier diode. So you must consider the current handling capability of the diode in selecting the diode to be used for the rectifier. And then the next one is the peak inverse voltage, referred to PIV in short. Now the peak inverse voltage has to do with the voltage that the diode can withstand in the reverse direction. That is, the largest reverse voltage that will appear across the diode. So what we are talking about is, for instance, what we are talking about the half-wave rectifier. During the negative half cycle, we said that the diode does not conduct. Even if the diode does not conduct, we observe that during the negative half cycle, the entire voltage Vs appears across the diode. Now, look at what we are talking about here. During the positive half cycle, the diode conducts, as shown in the output. But during the negative half cycle, the diode doesn't conduct, so the output voltage V out is zero. But you, you observe that the entire input voltage Vs appears across the diode. So the diode must be able to handle this peak inverse voltage. So when selecting the diode, we select a diode that can withstand this peak inverse voltage. So those are the two criteria in selecting a diode to be used as a rectifier. As just described, for half-wave rectifier, peak inverse voltage will be equal to Vm. So what have we considered in this in today's class? So as a way of review, Let's look at what we have discussed in today's class. So in today's class, we have looked at rectifier circuits. We've talked about the process of rectification, which is converting AC signal to DC signal. I'll mention that there are three types of rectifier. We have the half-wave rectifier, the full-wave center-tapped rectifier, and the full-wave bridge rectifier. And then we discuss more about the half-wave rectifier. We saw that the half-wave rectifier is a rectifier that conducts during alternate half cycle, as can be shown in the circuit and in the input and output wave form. And then we went ahead to discuss about the output during the alternate cycle. During the positive half cycle, 
the diode D1 conducts, and then the output voltage Vm sin omega t appears across the load resistor RL. While during the negative half cycle, the diode D1 does not conduct, and so there's no output voltage across resistor RL. Output voltage is equal to zero. And finally, we talked about two important parameters we need in selecting a rectifier diode, which are the current handling capability of the diode and the peak inverse voltage. So that's all about today's class. See you in the next class.